life is normal. There was a man, there was a woman, there was a mother, there was a father, there was marriage, there was family, there was divorce, there was cancer, there was disease, there was happiness, there was sadness, there were gay people, no one, no one did anything to gay people in those days. What do you think, everybody beat up gays? We know there were gay bars in the, in the village when I grew up in New York. The police knew it too. No one bothered the gay people. All of a sudden comes the 60s, and along with the 60s comes the communist rhetoric. And what they want to do is redefine not just marriage, but society itself. You don't understand this is more than marriage. It has much more to do with redefining the entire society. It's the same type of people who want to disarm the police, who want to disarm marriage. Do you understand what I just said to you? Well, that's my opinion. So play Mel Allen again. And As the drive hits the deep right field, that ball is going, going, it is gone. Maris hitting his second homer of the day. Here's Jane Fulman with the Petrullio. Sixth homer. Out of the ball game, too short right, of the record. That's enough already. Here's a headline on the Drudge Report. Freddie Gray broke neck and van, no evidence injured during arrest. I don't know what to believe. The other prisoner said he was whacking himself around in the van trying to collect some money. Uh, Freddie Gray broke neck and van. No evidence injured during arrest. How do I know what the truth is? How, how, what do I know, Freddie Gray? I know Freddie Gray from Freddie Pink. But already the whole city burned to the ground because of someone they didn't even know. All of a sudden, Freddie Gray was, was a, a folk hero. Where's the song on Freddie Gray now? An investigation death of Baltimore resident Freddie Gray has found no evidence that his fatal injuries were caused during the videotape arrest and interaction with police. Don't tell the Al Baluno Sharpton. I'm sorry, he's on a diet now. Al Skinny Sharpton. He's on the same diet as Barack Obama. They must be eating the same food and smoking the same air because they're both losing dr drastic amounts of weight. Uh, anyway, who you think they're going to believe this? If you had a picture of him banging his head on the wall, they would say the police did it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Going, it is gone. Maris hitting his second the simpler the times in America. The simpler times. Blacks and whites sat in a baseball stadium together. Uh, the cancer of hatred had not yet ari arisen because the communists were still in the back wards and the back rooms of America. But now that the insane asylums have been closed down because of Jerry Brown's father, uh, the streets are full of leftists and they're running the country. As a result, the, the nation is in, in, in a state of uh, emotional collapse. Everyone's against everyone else. So it's not bad enough the Islamo-fascists are hunting us. It's not bad enough that our intelligence agencies have been penetrated and are weakened and are not doing their job. It's not bad enough that we're almost at the verge of war with Russia because of Obama and Hillary Clinton. It's not bad enough that Israel could be nuked if uh, John Kerry, the anti-American, is permitted to sign the so-called nuclear deal. No, now we have to focus on redefining the most fundamental building block of a society, marriage. So let's talk about it. Since that's what the Supreme Court is doing, that's what we the people are going to be doing today a little bit on the Savage Nation. KSFO, San Francisco. Go ahead, my friend. Eric, you're on the uh, air with Michael Savage and many others. Hey, Michael. Uh, I'm proud to declare that I am a constitutional conservative whose son is getting married this coming weekend uh, and, a, and a believer that, uh, that it is something that is a state rights question. Your son is getting married, I assume, to a, to a man. Isn't that why you're calling? Yes, indeed. Okay, so what is your point? I don't understand your point. My point is that it's not a constitutional question. It's a question of states' rights versus, uh, versus government rights. And it's a question that should be defined at the state level. Uh, and that the ends justify the means. I agree with the end that my, that my son should have the, the, the right to be married. But it's no, hold on. You just said something very telling. You used the phrase right out of the communist playbook. The ends justify the means. Do you understand what you just said? No, what I'm saying is if the means... Well, you just said it. You said the ends justify the means. That's a, that's a tenet of Marxism. I'm sorry to, to, to tell you that. You may not even know it. Well, I do. But my, my caveat that, unfortunately, I did not express clearly 
was only if the means are just. The means being taken right now are not just. But what are the means? What do you mean? Well, the, it can be decided by a vote of the people, as has been uh, happened many times, but this legislation... Oh, so you don't want the Supreme Court establishing a precedent in the federal court. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, because it's a question left to the... You mean they'll take it away from states like California that are doing such a wonderful job in so many other areas where they can decide this? It, it should be a state-by-state, state, locality by locality. Well, let's ask another question. You know... I have to take you on your word. I don't know if you really have a son who's getting married, but let's say you are. Why does your son need to be married? Tell me what that's about. Sure, because it is, it is his desire to do so, and it's his desire to express his relationship. And in fact, the point of fact is the reason for them to be married is that is the only way that uh, he can that his spouse can be covered under his health insurance. All right, so it has an economic issue, which I raised yesterday, which I totally agree with. It's all about economics. You know and I know that there are domestic partnerships that could cover the economic issues, the visitation rights. And if states don't permit domestic partnerships, you can do it simply by a legal decree. You don't really need society to redefine marriage to establish that, that uh, fiscal fairness. You're absolutely correct. And this, this goes right back to if the means are just, if the people of a locality believe that this is what they want to do, again, the society evolves. But society evolves with the consent of society, not by, uh, uh, by activist judge legislation. So what do you mean if society, sometimes society devolves as a result of activist legislation? Sometimes it evolves. No. Some, would argue that, some would argue that if you permit the definition of marriage to be redefined, you're devolving marriage. You're not, you're not evolving it. It, but it depends on how that definition comes about. If it is the will of the people, again, this, because, and this, this is a discussion that I've had with my son with, with respect to, I think it was Proposition 8 on the California ballot. Yes. The people voted many times. The first time it was, came up, the, the defensive marriage was, was very, very soundly passed by like 85%, something to that effect. Really? Well, how about Proposition 209, which banned affirmative action in public sector jobs? And one rotten, stinking left-wing judge named Felton Henderson nullified the votes of six million people. So your argument goes up in smoke. You can't handpick what the, what the local people can and cannot do. What you're saying is you want this thing to be voted by the people. Then why don't you say you want that upheld as well? I, I, I certainly do. And, and All right. Well, uh, good. Then you're a man of fairness. Absolutely, my follow-up. Are you are you aware of? I want to get into a mysticism for a minute, so we can see this in another realm. People don't know that I'm somewhat of a, even though I sound like I'm not. Sometimes I sound like I'm a longshoreman from the 1950s. There's a part of Michael Savage that's quite mystical. Do you know what Jacob's Ladder refers to? Yeah. Could you please tell the audience what it, in your mind means? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, but isn't that an effort to, to build a ladder to, to heaven or something like that? Okay, that's very fair. And on this ladder to heaven, on Jacob's ladder, there are rungs, meaning steps on the ladder, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Jewish mystics who are totally in favor of protecting the weakest members of society, who they consider to be widows and orphans, by the way, the Jewish mystics, going back a thousand years, believe that a widow and an orphan, even wealthy ones, are the weakest elements of society, and they, they must be taken care of on, on Jacob's ladder. And yet they say, and I'm going to quote now, it is the perversion or confusion of the rungs on the ladder which is the cause of all of our troubles. For evil is simply good out of place. And they give an example. Peace, they say, peace. So high an ideal on our rung of values may, if it is placed too high, become evil, as when Aaron wanted peace above all and gave the people their idols. And it is the confusion of the rungs which will of often cause difficulty, as when one tries to satisfy a spiritual hunger through the physical, or when a person tries to satisfy a physical need through the spiritual. Now you're saying, what does that have to do with gay marriage? maybe something and maybe nothing. I think that we're missing the picture here. 
And I think that we're, we're misinterpreting where this rung on the ladder to heaven belongs. It shouldn't be at the top of the ladder. I, I understand your point entirely, and there is a distinction between the legal entity and the spiritual entity of marriage. Well, now we're talking. That's something no one's even mentioned yet. You know, in all these, these discussions, Eric, no one has talked about the spiritual dimension of marriage, only about the legal definition of marriage. Michael, all I can tell you is, you know, just as you ha have provided a different vision or perspective, there are those of us who also have a different vision or perspective. I totally respect that, by the way, and I think you understand that or else you wouldn't have called the show. If you thought I was just a pig-headed right-winger, you wouldn't have called. Uh, okay, Michael, what I want oh, to oh, Hold it. That laughter means I'm wrong, huh? No, 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 no. Not wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you feel or believe, but how many people in talk radio would have taken the discussion of, of gay marriage and taken it to Jacob's Ladder to heaven? Nobody but me. I don't know if I made. I don't know if I made my point, but you picked on some. You picked up on some part of it. I think that's very important, which is that there is a spiritual dimension to marriage that everyone seems to understand, and we think that by redefining marriage, we're changing the whole spiritual nature of the word marriage and the meaning of marriage. Agreed. All right. Well, maybe we, maybe we somewhat moved each other in some direction. All I can say is bless you on your son's marriage, if that's what you want. And and what can I say? If I had had a gay child and he was getting married, I'd probably feel the same way you do. But I've been very lucky because my children are not gay. And I say that with all sincerity. I think it's a, it's a burden. I don't think it's a gift. I, well, I agree with you. And I also agree with the perspective on the white owl, which we discussed earlier, of your, your dream. Uh, but it, whoa, uh, but wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is interesting. You remember the white owl show from five weeks ago. Tell me how it relates to this discussion. Well, it relates in that, Michael, you had said that nobody else in talk radio would take the point of view of spirituality and legal definition. And brought in Jacob's Ladder, nobody else in talk radio would have done the White Owl show the way you did. So I take it you listen on a fairly regular basis. I hope you're not angry at me for anything I've said. I've tried not to be, uh, you know, somewhat let's say insensitive to your situation or, the, or those listening to me across the country, but I feel that marriage is between a man and a woman. I believe that gay people have every right to have the financial stability that straight people have, and I think it can be done either through domestic partnerships or through a, a few legal letters would cover visitation and inheritance rights. That's my feeling. Uh, and I don't think the entire society at a time like this needs to be rattled, and yet it is being rattled, so we'll see what the Supremes do, Eric. Eric, please accept a new a copy of my forthcoming delicious novel, Countdown to Mecca. There's absolutely nothing to do with sexuality in it other than, uh, you know, the sexuality of the Muslims, in this case, the radical Muslims who kill gays, and why the generals decide to, to off them in one fell swoop. This is The Savage Nation. The phone number is 855 the novel Countdown to Mecca will be out, but it's not next week. It's the week after. It won't be in the stores till then. I, I thought it was in the stores next week. So I brought up a little mysticism because I don't think everything is what it appears to be. And I think there are other dimensions to reality. I always have known that my whole life. We all do. We seem to think that we're two-dimensional creatures, sometimes maybe three-dimensional creatures. But sometimes I think we're multi-dimensional creatures. And I believe that there's more to, the, to any picture that meets the eye, including why Islam is on the rise, why the West is falling, and why America, in the midst of all of this, is obsessed with a situation such as gay marriage. I believe that there's a spiritual element to this entire picture that we can touch on if you want. How about the Baltimore riots? What would the spiritual element of that be? Why is that happening again? Why is it suddenly 1968? Why do we have minority mayors who tell the police to not, to not fight back against the rioters? And they only stopped the rioters, only stopped when the National Guard came out and had guns in their hands. Why are communists in New York City who have nothing to do, kids from the colleges who have nothing to do, usually kids from middle class houses, especially those radical girls, running around with knapsacks all over all over New York trying to burn things down 
attacking police. Why? Why are they permitted to run rampant in the streets? Why? What's the spiritual meaning of all of this?